Hi, my name is Al Gonzalez. I want to review with you at the start of the year, see how your lessons are going, and offer a few ideas for you as you engage your children with equitable instruction. Now, in order to meet the needs, we need to make sure that the children from the very start of our lessons understand what we're doing and why. So I'm hoping you start off with your lesson objective. That objective can be a very quick sentence. It can be part of the agenda of the lesson or day or it could be something that is on a handout in whatever way you present it. Make sure the children have an opportunity to hear it from you, understand what it is, read it themselves, and even share what it means with a partner. In whatever way you present the lesson objective, make sure your children are very aware that they have a job and you have a job to meet the objective, that there will be an outcome to meeting the objective and that there will be time to work to master that objective. The following are just a couple of examples of lesson objectives that are standards-based from California for grades kindergarten through eight. Once that lesson objective is made clear, the lesson begins. And from the children's perspective, so does some anxiety. What does this mean for me, they think. Will it be hard, they think. You start to see from some, especially those who have struggled recently, some behavior that may not be so productive. So after sharing that objective, you have to survey that classroom for the amount and type of anxiety that's out there. Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of starting? Is it fear of continued success? Is it just fear? Oh no, what am I going to do now with that objective? Whatever it may be, once you receive that information from body language, from behavior, from worried facial expressions, you need to make sure you address it so that everybody can engage with you with the lesson you have prepared. So let's review a few ideas on addressing some of the basic anxiety that children will exhibit. First, they may start to chatter, start to move, start to look away. What they're trying to tell you is, in this very clear, body language oriented message, I'm worried teacher, I'm not sure I'm going to get it. That's all they're doing. Don't take it personally, please. Try to keep an open mind. Try to understand their perspective and realize, even though you have prepared, they have not. So they need to be assured that one, they're safe. You're going to be okay, students. Two, you're not alone. As I look around the classroom, many of you have this look of, I'm not sure I can get it. So three, they need your support. And one basic sentence that I've shared with others is, boys and girls, all you need to do to be successful is blank. Give them access to how to be successful with the activity that you're about to engage with or the content you're about to share so that they can see they'll survive it, they'll thrive through the lesson, and they'll find success. Now there's some other behaviors that students will exhibit. One of which is total silence or great volume. Total silence is trying to sneak away, try to fall between the cracks and no one notices that you're struggling. That's what the student's going through. Another possibility is the students will be louder than you need them to be. What they're trying to say is, I don't know if I can follow this lesson, so I'm going to distract the teacher and everybody else as best I can by asking questions, changing the topic, being silly and talking to a neighbor. Whatever it is, the purpose is the same. Can I delay my entry into this lesson because I'm not sure I can tackle it? Another technique students use is the I got this, it's all good technique which is them basically saying, I'm going to cover up my anxiety. I'm going to cover up my fear. I'm going to cover up my lack of skills or limited skill and pretend that I got a handle of it. That serves two purposes. One, it makes that child look good in front of his or her peers. Two, it could be a smoke screen that allows you to leave him or her alone while serving others. Meanwhile, that student just feeling a sense of relief that they're not getting attention for not knowing. Now, while all these three techniques that students use may be bothersome, 
They are very clear messages to us, the teaching professionals in each classroom, that students do need help. So once again, the students need to understand, that one, they're safe. They're going to get it. Two, they're not alone. They're with peers and you in the classroom. And three, they will be supported. And understanding that will help them overcome the behaviors that are a message to us that they're really anxious about any given lesson. Lessons focus on these lesson objectives that are standards based and for many, especially if they're learning English or have a history of struggling in school, a very difficult mountain to climb by oneself. So with your support, they're going to find success. We have to believe that first in order for them to see themselves in us and to see themselves as successful just as we see them. So in order to guide students to success, especially those who have had limited success in the past, either because of our relationship with them or their relationships with school, we have to be focused and be as equitable as we can to make sure we're meeting their needs as best as possible, while serving, of course, the whole entire classroom. So let's review a couple of ideas for meeting need of individuals within a large group. Number one, I want to repeat myself again, that lesson objective. Students have to know why they're there and what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to get there. So please make sure that that process is understood, prepared for, and presented to all. Two, in order to guide children to success, they have to know that we believe they will be successful. So with our body language, with our proximity, with our tone of voice, with our language, we have to make sure they understand that we are the leaders of success in that classroom and if they follow us, they will be successful too. And three, when we give individual assistance, students have to know that when they're not with us, they're responsible for their own work. And that's about growing young people to understand that everybody in the classroom has a job at every given moment of the day. So if I am teaching, then they are listening and writing and taking notes and participating. If a child is speaking or teaching or sharing, then I have a job while that child speaks and so do his or her classmates. If the children are working in groups, they have to understand that I have a job to manage and maintain and help each group focus and they have to understand what their jobs are as groups as well as group members. And then finally, if I'm in an individual conference as a teacher, then I have a job that is known to everybody, the child who I'm conferencing with has a job known to everybody, and then the rest of the classroom has a job that's known to everybody. We have to be sure to understand what works well as we engage in these processes. We have to make sure that we understand what our challenges are as classroom leaders and with children who struggle. We have to understand what's working and why so that we can repeat that and make it happen again. And we have to understand what doesn't work so that we can avoid ever doing that one more time. As you move forward with this school year, I hope these ideas are validating. I hope they offer a quality reminder. And if new, I hope they also offer new learning. If I can be of assistance, please contact me, but I wish you well in focusing on objective, in understanding student behavior, and in guiding your children towards success. Thanks very much. Have a good day.